Hi there. I hope you're going to enjoy the episode you're about to listen to. But before you do, you should know that this podcast would not be possible without the generous support of some of our listeners, either through our Buzzsprout website or through Patreon. I want to give a sincere thank you to Brian Heyer, Brandon and Sarah Girak, Steve Zank, Scott Henrich, Deborah Hilger, and Mikhail Langner. Thank you. Welcome to another episode of the Lutheran History Podcast. Today we have a guest We're going to talk about the eventual formation of the Confessional Evangelical Conference. Our guest is Timothy Plichta. Is that the way you pronounce your name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. He is a Wells homeschooled high school student living in Germantown, Wisconsin. He loves Lutheran history in general and is especially enthralled with anything related the CELC, and I lifted that straight from his paper. That That's his biography right now, uh, ladies and gentlemen. He is enthralled with the CELC. So that's our topic today. Um, Timothy, thank you so much for joining us. I, I'm very impressed to have a, a high school student um, this interested in history, and uh, you tell me that uh, this article it will be published in a couple issues a couple months from now. Um, congratulations on that. Yeah, thank you. I'm very excited to be here. So my first question is, uh, how did you get started on this topic and project, and and what got you enthralled with with Lutheran history? So I've always kind of been been uh, interested in, in history, specifically church history. Of and as and I've read lots of books about that. And then ever since I discovered, I don't know exactly when it was, but I sp- like the rich history with. Lutheranism and with the Wisconsin Evangelical Lutheran Synod, I was just like, wow, this is really interesting. And I liked it so much that last year for school, I, I for school, I'm kind of able to choose like a little bit of what I want to do for some of the times. And I decided I really like to do some historical research. And then I was, so now I was, I was able to do that. And then when I was thinking about what I wanted to do, I had heard about this thing called the Confessional Evangelical Lutheran Conference. You would call the CLC sometimes too. And I was, I was doing research, you know, about that and about its founding too. And it was really interesting, but it was a little too broad for the scopes of my limited time and that kind of thing. So I had to really kind of narrow it in. And then something kind of interesting while I was doing research on the CELC, I found out about this thing called the Evangelical Lutheran Confessional Forum. I was like, what is this? And then when I looked into it, there wasn't really much research um, being done on this topic. I didn't really find anything. So it was kind of, you know, kind of a mystery thing. And then I you know, was thinking like, this would be a really good topic for me to look into. And I could even still do something with the CELC with it because it will, we'll, I'll talk about this later, but it really had a foundational role in the CELC's founding. Yeah. Uh, and just for if our audience members don't know, what is the CELC? So the CELC is a global um, organization of 34 church bodies from around the world and it, um, confessional Lutheran church bodies from around the world. And like the Wells is, is a member and the ELS is a member. S- several mission churches around the world are members. Yeah. And it's one of the, I guess, three uh, international Lutheran kind mm-hmm. of yeah. conferences, fellowships, whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe not the most best known, but it is a, mm-hmm. it's a large gathering of Lutherans around the world. Yeah. And so it's, in other words, for Lutherans, it's a pretty big deal. And you're you're yeah. saying, well, in your research, you haven't found much information on kind of the the precursor to this. And mm-hmm. that's, that's an excellent topic for any uh, historical research. And that's what you're providing with us, uh, us with today. Um, and you mentioned the two main um, American bodies, at least, that are part of this this group would be the the Wells and then the 
the ELS. And just to get a little background, um, how did this relationship between the wells and the, the L's, ELS, evolve leading up to the formation of the ELCF? So it's kind of remarkable how the uh, relationship between the wells and the ELS um, kind of, you know, grew during the years. Because when it, when it was first, when the, so the precursor body to the ELS was the Norwegian Synod, and it was established from immigrants from Norway, pastors from Norway. And way back in, I think it was in the 1850s, kind of when it came to be. And in that time too, the Missouri Synod, another main church body for this is, uh, they they started talking with the Norwegian Synod and even declared fellowship with them in 1857. So back then, the, the Norwegian Synod was a lot closer with Missouri than the Wisconsin Synod. Uh, the Wisconsin Synod at that time, it was starting to you know, become more confessional and but and and relationships with the Norwegian Synod were kind of through Missouri. And as things started to happen, we started to get more in contact. Well, started to get more in contact with them, and this and really started when they when the ELS was founded in 1917. Uh, you know the mergers of Nor big Norwegian bodies and then the splinter group of the EL of the ELS. And so that resulted in Missouri, the ELS, the Wells, and a couple other little church bodies uh, being in the Synodical Conference. And in the Synodical Conference, everyone, you know, was in fellowship together, you know, a, a place where they could grow together. And so that, was, that, that happened for a number of years. But the Missouri Synod started, started to go more, more, more liberal. Uh, starting with uh, the uh, the um, fellowship discussions with the AL American Lutheran Church, the ALC, 1935, and Wells and L's or Wells and ELS were started to see themselves coming together and calling Missouri back to its former position. And also something that that really strengthened the ties of these two bodies was that. Wells second career pastors were trained in the Macbeth, it was what's called the Macbeth program at Bethany Lutheran College. So what this was 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 uh, Wells second career pastors were trained at Bethany Lutheran College, the ELS college, and then then sent this to the Mequon Seminary. And this result really resulted in a strengthening of the relationships between the two. You know, with the pastors receiving their educations together, and again, this can be seen. You know, in their kind of battle against Missouri in the Synodical Conference, that Wells and ELS they they were they were united in doctrine. They they found themselves in agreement. So, as so, uh, uh, and the, originally Wells and the Norwegian Synod they weren't really close together, but uh, eventually. The Wells and ELS came to be really close sisters. Yeah, so in that moment of crisis, they they found themselves mm -hmm. on the same page and said, yeah. we should work together. Yeah, and that's interesting, too, how you noted how Wells passed her second career once would have been trained in a, an ELS institution yeah. at Bethany um, Lutheran College in Mankato. So got some personal connections as well. Well, Next, let's talk about the primary goals of the precursor to the CELC, which is the focus of your, your paper, your article, the Evangelical Lutheran Confessional Forum, the ELCF. Uh, what were its goals at when it was founded back in 1967? So after Wells broke fellowship with the Missouri Synod in 1961 and ELS had done so in 1955, there really was no like larger body for these two students to, to be a part of. I mean, they were still sisters, but there wasn't you know, a larger body where they could strengthen their relations, things like that. And so there was a, a really big need for that. And so the, the Evangelical Lutheran Confessional Forum, it's more, uh, a lot of people just call it the forum, just you know, a nice little nickname for it. It, it really uh, filled a a really important spot in Wells L's relations. Some of the goals in, so in, it took a little bit to get it started, 
there were some meetings between the Wells and ELS where they, you know, kind of said, oh, I think we should, we think we should get together and establish like a permanent forum to help us. And then it was really uh, President Nauman of the Wells and also President Peterson of the ELS that really put, put things together and also the uh, doctrinal commissions of each body. And so in November 10th, 1966, the uh, main, um, main you know, presidents kind of things like that of the two church bodies, they met together to plan for a permanent forum for Wells ELS. And what their, the goals for this body that they decided were that it would uh, strengthen relations between the two and, ex, you know, explore areas of possible joint endeavor, you know, uh, so that the gospel could be spread as efficiently as possible between these two bodies. The re review the convention essays and public doctrinal statements of the respective synods so that they could strengthen the relations and you know, uh, avoid misunderstandings, things like that. And then also explore the possibility of reaching other Lutherans of like mind. This is, would be especially important when they, when the Wells and ELS helped found the CELC in, the 1993, in 1993, that, you know, they were kind of, you know, helping these other church bodies around the world to grow in their confessional position. Yeah, so the, yeah. Yeah, so you're pointing out that it's kind of filling that void when the synodical mm -hmm, conference yeah. went defunct. They said, well, we're still in fellowship. We can still work together. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's do that and, and move forward. So, yeah, it, it, I wouldn't say it's inevitable, but it seems as if uh, there was a good good reason to, to come mm -hmm. together and, and work together. Mm -hmm. So that leads into our next question. How did the establishment of the ELCF in 1967 address the need for that larger body of synods following the breakup of the synodical conference. So the when the EL, the forum was founded, uh, there was um, the the there was uh, four, twelve members of the Wells that were part of this, and then twelve members of the ELS that were part of this, and it really uh, really strengthened the relation the relationship between the between the synods. You know they. They could, as a, uh, uh, they could, you know, uh, make sure they were uh, delegating gospel outreach. They could, you know, strengthen their relationship between, you know, they would discuss doctrinal statements of the two bodies, and uh, you know, do devotions together, things like that. Really, it really was a place that they could express their fellowship, just like the synodical conference before it had been. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Have you ever thought what it would be like to be a cop? Well, not just any cop, a Texas cop. Well, we have the show for you. TMPA's Blue Grid Podcast, the voice of Texas law enforcement, where we share intense stories, yes, the good ones and the bad ones. We also share information and have good discussions about how we can improve this profession. So what are you waiting for? Grab that gun belt and come ride shotgun with us today. Available on YouTube and where you get your podcast. Good. So now let's see, what were the four main areas of church activity that were discussed during the formation of the, the forum? And why were they significant? Yeah, the, yeah, the forum was a place for the Wells and Owls to, you know, kind of help each other along. And as part of that, they had these uh, four sections that that were a part of the forum. So one was an a, div a division on administration, a doctrinal division, a missions division, and then also a education division. And over the years of the forum, you know, a couple more would be added, a couple more would be taken away. So, but it, it remained about those same four divisions. And they're they're very they're significant because they uh, because the, the administration is especially it was important because. For the forum, it address it address the smooth running of the body, you know, and uh, the agreement of the synods, you know, to avoid misunderstandings. In that first meeting, the administration division met to discuss the logistics of the body that they would 
meet every two years and that the they, that the membership of the forum the the 12 by 12 format 12 wells 12 ELS people would be picked by the synod presidents so it, it, in conclude in like the focus of the administration was the harmony of the two bodies then for the doctrine it was it was important because it helped strengthen ties between the wells and ELS by you know looking over reports that the to the synods had made like you know like a doctrinal statement or thing, things like that that had come out possibly also they looked over essays from the from each synod but also the doctrine really especially helped for the founding of the CELC they were also concerned with relationships with other sister churches around the world of the wells and ELS and so the doctrine committee what doctrine division was really important for the strengthening and then the kind of the outreach part of strengthening other church bodies in their confessional position as well. The education committee, it was, uh, it, it dealt with, you know, worker training schools, parochial schools, also a little bit of pu publicity stuff too. Also for Sunday school stuff, they would be responsible for, you know, for distributing Sunday school literature for between the two bodies also college outreach, young person outreach. And they were really concerned with the development of the faiths of the members of the two synods so they could help with that. And then all the missions division, it was especially important so that they could spread the gospel as efficiently as possible. So they could meet together, you know, the what whole missions people would meet. They would say, oh, well, we're going to start a mission here. And they would make sure that the ELS or something like that was not starting a mission in that place. Or, and also an, another important thing with the missions area, it was, it was encouragement for the two bodies when they would start their missions. One other would encourage them, maybe help them along a little bit. So the missions division really helped the evangelism of the two bodies. Now, you need to coordinate, right, and, and work yeah. together. Uh -huh. uh, to have teamwork. Yeah, well, that uh, kind of leads to the, the last of our, our contact question, and you alluded to it a little bit, um, about how the work of the forum eventually led to the establishment of the CELC. It, there came a day where uh, these Lutheran church bodies said, you know what, more than just the two of us meeting together in a forum, we could make this something something bigger. It sounds like both the doctrinal um, section of advising other Lutherans or other Christians mm -hmm. around the world and the missions uh, possibly were the were the two areas where that that mm -hmm. led to the CELC. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. So the biggest part that the forum played in the establishment of the CELC was something called the six man committee. So the six man committee were, were six people, three from each body, three from the ELS, three from the from Wells, and they met to plan for the establishment of the CELC. And they met in conjunction with the forum. So when the forum met, then this six-man committee would meet. And, and most of the members, I think pretty much all the members of the six-man committee were also part of the forum as well. And so this six-man committee, it, it really, uh, it planned the constitution where, where this first meeting of the CELC would take place. Essayists sent invitations, things like that. So... Just look for exactly where this is here. You know, so they would they decided kind of kind of the logistics of the body that they they decided you know it would be meet every three years the CELC would meet every three years that uh, it would be it would be a place for the strengthening that of the fellowship of the member churches. And it would be involve uh, members of the church body. It wouldn't just be a place for clergy to meet. It would also it would be you know kind of a grassroots organization kind of thing like that. Also, they chose essayists for the first convention. I have a list of them there too. You know, and um, they chose the place for the first convention as well in Oberbasel, Germany. 
And so this, the six, I was helped a lot in my research of the six man committee by interviewing one of the actual committee members, uh, pastor or president of Beth, of former president of Bethany Lutheran Theological Seminary, Galen Schmeling. He's also a, pre, a former president of the CELC as well. And he mentioned of the mentioned of the decision that because the old the CELC was trying to emulate the old synodical conference, you know, be a synodical an international synodical conference. They they were really trying to that's what they were trying to do. And the old synodical conference did mission work. And when, when the committee was discussing what the CLC would look like, they were they asked, should the CELC start a mission? And uh, uh, President Schmeling, when I uh, interviewed him, he really helped you know kind of bring this stuff to life. And uh, the decision they made, they wanted to, they didn't want to have a mission. They wanted to strengthen the member churches to go out and have them do mission work. Yeah, um, we'll talk a minute about the the research method. I want to ask you a little more about like the interview process yeah. and all that too. Um, do you have the date for the founding of the CELC? I don't have it on my my fingertips. So that here, was but... founded in 1993. Okay, by uh, 13 member churches. There was, of course, the you know the Wells and Ls that were a part of it, but then there was also I, I I'll sell uh, say the member churches here. There was Christ the King Lutheran Church in Nigeria. That was a splinter group from the former synodical conference mission in nigeria then there was uh the Con the confessional evangelical lutheran church in mexico that was a member of it that was a kind of a wells mission kind of area there's also the confessional evangelical lutheran church of puerto rico which was a wells mission there was the evangelical lutheran confessional church of finland kind of one of those free church bodies in Ger in uh europe Another big uh, body in this, in the CELC is the Evangelical Lutheran Free Church of Germany. So they were a big, also a big pusher to start something international, you know, get this forum thing to uh, kind of to all, the whole world because they had, they were at East, they're part, they're mainly in East Germany. And at the time, East Germany was, you know, shut down under communism, the Iron Curtain, things like that. And when when that fell in 1991, I think it was, they realized, you know, they were kind of alone. Their sister churches in Germany, they had become more liberal and they were, they, 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 they were longing for fellowship was, I, I heard it put one way. So they were really emphasizing the need for all these, you know, scattered little church bodies to, for the, the need of some larger fellowship. There, you know, there are several other mission churches, the ELS of Australia. They were a splinter group from merger of a bunch of Australian church bodies. I think there was a previous podcast about the history of the Lutheran church in Australia. Mm -hmm. I think it was mentioned there. There's also Lutheran, the Lutheran church of Cameroon was another one. It was a, 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 a like, a, you know, kind of an isolated Lutheran church body that reached out to the well, to wells for help and support. And there's the uh, Lutheran Church of Central Africa in Malawi, Zambia, the Big Wells Mission. Malawi, Zambia was a founding member of that too. There's also a church in Sweden called the, uh, the, the Lutheran Confessional Church of Sweden. And again, it was another one of those isolated little bodies that really hungered for the fellowship offered in a larger organization. And there was the Wells Mission in Japan that also joined. Yeah, and that's. That's all of them. So they met on April 27th to 29th in 1993 in Oberwesel, Germany. You know, it was uh, right on the Rhine River. They chose this location, again, because it was an easy place to get to in Germany. The, the main airport was in Frankfurt at that time, and so it was nice and close to there. But also, it was, there were, it was kind of cheap housing. They stayed at a youth hostel there. Mm. And also, in the, the the only kind of West German congregation of the German church was conveniently located about 20 minutes away. Uh, so they they met, they printed essays. There were 19 voting delegates, 11 advisory delegates, and 12 official guests. And and they really felt this place of a 
area for the strengthening of the faiths of everyone present. Yeah, I wonder if, um, and maybe this this came up in your your interview or maybe not, but I wonder if they picked Germany too, just as kind of the the birthplace of, of Lutheranism. Yeah, yeah that was the one of the reasons that was given. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. that's kind of neat too. Yeah, mm-hmm. there, yeah. there's they were, they had some history in mind as they did something yeah. kind of historic on their own. Yeah. Well, very good. So th- I think uh, we'll leave it there for the content. Uh, as as we mentioned, this uh, article that you've written will be published in the uh, in the near future in the Wells Historical Journal for those who would like to to see more. You've included some very helpful um, items in your appendix section as well. Good mm-hmm. reference points for both the forum and the, and the formation of the CELC. And now, this is the part I'm also really excited to ask you about, is about your research method, because as as we mentioned, we introduced you, you are a, a high school student, and yet you've produced some um, good primary su- uh, research-based uh, history here with your with your article, and that's um, that that's pretty pretty high quality for, for someone of, of your age. So I want to give you a little... Uh, Shout out it and, and credit for that. You know, take it all humility, but it's still pretty impressive that you produce something like this at, at such a young age. So, did were you? I first before I ask about the the method itself, were you directed and and how did you research? Did you get advice from someone, or is this something you kind of figured out on your own? So I think definitely my parents helped me a lot, and you know, kind of saying, oh, maybe try researching this way. You know, try it. and then also, yeah. So that was definitely helpful, but. Like, uh, uh, something that I found on my own was the Wells Archives in Waukesha. So I went there to look because I, as I mentioned before, there really wasn't anything about this evangelical Lutheran confessional forum out there. So so I needed to go and, you know, get, get my hands dirty in the original sources. So, yes. Yeah, so, mm-hmm. so I kind of found that on my own, looked at other essays and things like that, too. Yeah. So I looked at the secondary material, too. So, yeah. Yeah. That is a it's a rather professional approach there. So <laughs> keep that up, and you'll you'll go far as when it comes to to doing history. If that's something you're you're interested in. So you mentioned going to the archives uh, as part of your research method. Uh, what was that like? Yeah, going so there the, and uh-huh, so at the archives originally, what a bunch of what I did was look at stuff for the, the uh, about the commission interchurch relations that the Wells had done. And in there were included some of the reports for this forum thing. But then I found there was this box of kind of unsorted forum material, all the forum reports from any number of years. And so that was really interesting to, to see the um, original minute, minute meetings from that. And also something that was interesting, too, is I found this one report from from uh some it was a it was in that kind of area of the forum section but it didn't really have a date on it it was you know that when it was copied you know whenever it was put into the archives it was it got kind of copied off and so so that was kind of interesting finding this kind of mystery report and then reading it and see seeing that it was it was kind of a pre-forum thing that emphasized the need for the forum to be founded and some sort of area for the Wells and Ellis to meet. So that was fun finding something, you know, kind of mysterious like that. Yeah. And I talk about that sometimes in the podcast too. What's the thing that got you kind of excited um, mm-hmm. to find a discovery? And yeah, um, that's kind of the, the historian's best day when you, when you go to the archives and you find the unsorted box that no one else has really mm-hmm. yeah. looked at yet. And now you get to get to unpack that and, and talk about it. So it seems like another benefit of your project was that the, the time frame of it, it's still within living memory that allows yeah, you to do, exactly. do some interviews. So, or at least, at least one. So what can you tell us about that part of your research? Yeah, so I interviewed uh, uh, Galen Schmeling. He was, he, again, the former president of Bethany Lutheran Theological Seminary and former CLC president. And that was a really neat experience because you get I got to you know hear from a personal personal side, a personal angle to this history. And I think that really helped with it. He he talked about so he was a part of the the forum before the six man committee, and he was 
also a part of the six-man committee, which founded the CELC. So he had kind of everything I was looking for. And so he, I, I yeah, he, I gave him some questions to answer and over a phone interview. And it was about, yeah, what turned into like two hour long conversation. It was fun to hear all he had to say, especially about his recollections from the 1993 convention of the CELC. Yeah. Well, what a special uh, insight mm -hmm. that that gave for you and that, you know, personally, it's kind of part of your, your memory too, right? having that mm -hmm. conversation with him. Yeah. Well, very good. Any, anything else about the, the research you'd like to talk about today? I mean, just the, the fact that even though there wasn't a lot of essay material like that had already been done in this topic, there was still some really important things that I found. Like, you know, there was in for when I was studying the relationships before the founding of the forum, you know, the where where the ELS had gone from strangers you know, to really close brethren of the Wells. I, there was a really good uh, history done of that that I found that was really helpful. And, you know, other things looking at convention proceedings too of of the Wells that, that really helped as well. Getting some, you know, when, when it was actually done, like getting the year pinpointed of when something was, they said this or said that. You know, there's also just little snippets of other, essays and stuff that deal with the forum, you know, just comparing my stuff to that to make sure, you know, it all sounded good and a good uh, thing like that too. All right. Well, finally, before we uh, close out our podcast episode today, uh, do you think there are any more areas of potential research or, or writing to be done on this topic that you've already done uh, with your discussion today? I definitely think so. This is as I said before, this was kind of the first thing done on this thing called the Evangelical Lutheran Confessional Forum. There's definitely a lot more areas for research to be done in this area. I think it's especially towards the later part of this history, uh, kind of before the founding of the CELC and after, you know, like 1970. I didn't really dig into that kind of stuff. There's a lot of probably a gold mine of information for that. Then also, it, it the forum still continues today as a Wells and ELS area for continued growth. And I think it'd be neat to look at the more recent history of that to see maybe how it's changed because of the, the CELC, you know, and what, what has been, what has been going on with that right now. And also there's, there's a lot of stuff with the CELC that could be done too. It was really amazing that for me, at least, I think it's, it's just, just to hear that there's other, church bodies just like us from around the world, even, even though they're kind of small bodies. And I think it would be something that I'm really interested in is the history of those. How did those little bodies get founded, whether they're a mission or they founded on their own? That's kind of really interesting stuff. Yeah, I agree with you there. Well, mm -hmm. hopefully you've really enjoyed this historical research and both the mm -hmm. research side and the writing side. And You'll have a, a, a lifetime's worth of, yeah. of uh, work ahead of you if you if you do even just what you outlined today. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Timothy, thank you so much for a, an excellent topic and, and a, a very enjoyable interview. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. <laughs>